Carom Board. One of the most unique board games to ever exist, yet one you've probably never even heard of. I remember first being introduced to this weird board game in the front yard of my grandparents' home when I was nine years old. Back then, it was played on a stool, mounted on a small tea table, with participants getting their hands covered in chalk. Today, it's played on a stool, mounted on a small tea table, with participants getting their hands covered in chalk. You see, the beauty about this board game is that nothing ever changes, just the participants. In other words, in its 200 year history, the equipments used have more or less remained intact. Historians argue about its origins, with the majority pointing to India as its birthplace, while some link it to Portugal and Burma. But whatever the historical origins, Karimbord has had a massive part to play in Southeast Asian society. But that's enough about the history. How do you actually play the game? Well, that's the thing. I don't actually know. Because there are so many variations and rules, it really does depend on who you're playing with. But to strip it down to the simplest form, the aim of the game is to get all your coins in the four pockets. The winner is the first player or team to pocket all their coins. But getting this piece in can also determine the winner. This is the queen, arguably the most important piece in the game. Because even if you get all your coins in, but the other team gets the queen in, you might still lose. Here's what they call the baseline. I can only flick the striker along this line. You start by flicking the striker to break the coins. Quite similar to pool. Once you get a coin in, you get a point and get to go on again until you miss. Sounds fun, right? Yeah, until you commit a foul. That's the foul. That's not a foul. Yes. No, it's not. That's the foul. I touched it. What are the fouls, you ask? Well, pocketing an opponent's coin is a foul. A coin leaving the board is a foul. A player's final piece being pocketed before the queen is a foul. Positioning the striker incorrectly is a foul. Yeah, it can get complicated. What's more strange, at the end of the game, not only are the pocketed coins tallied up, but the player or team with the coins still left on the table have to tally them up and give those points to the opposition. Strange, I know. My old man over here is now going to try and teach me some of the flicking techniques that he's picked up over the course of his very, very long life. Here's the amateur grip. Here's the straight grip. Here's the thumb shot grip. Here's the index finger grip, or what I like to call the lazy finger grip. And my personal favourite, the scissor grip. Unlike other board games, there's something decent about Karen board. Something really likeable and pure. A game where there's no need to roll a dice or to tactically outsmart your opposition, but just a bunch of chalk dusted coins and a few functioning fingers. No need to play the game in silence or try to think two steps ahead of your opposition, but rather a game played with plenty of smiles, laughter, with hot cups of tea to keep the game flowing. The Chinese often refer to carom board as the simple game, yet a game that also promotes a level of decency, modesty and togetherness. Though it might not be the most popular board game in the world, it doesn't need to be.